I think uh, we should start now. Uh, it's almost 24, 25 of us. And I don't want to take a crazy amount of time for uh, for the guys during exam preparation. So, can I request uh, Ayush? Do you want to unmute yourself and put your camera on, Ayush, please? Yes. Hello, sir. Hi, Shabash. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Chalo. First of all, a big thanks to you for uh, taking out time, uh, you know, in this very, very hectic schedule. Uh, obviously, we know that you're not sitting uh, the upcoming exams, but I I also know that you probably are already preparing for your June exams. <laughs> so No, no, no sir. not yet. March, May, we will start. Okay, fair enough. Chalo, good. So, <clears throat> the, the objective of today's session right, is to, uh, in the most briefest manner possible, uh, understand, you know, what are the key things that uh, one should do to get the best of the best out of your exams. Now, I obviously do not expect this session to help all of you to get your rank because for that, you really need to start a lot earlier than uh, what it is today, 18th of Feb, so only a couple of weeks to go, right? So, however... Uh, this session should ideally help you figure out what are the key uh, areas to focus on, right? And uh, especially what you can do in the last two weeks to make sure that you are still able to do a good job, right? So without further ado, first of all, a big thanks to Ayush. Uh, once again, congratulations from all of us at FPA and from ACCA. Being an ACCA member, we also have double sir here. You know, who himself is a is an ACCA member, has been teaching ACCA for many, many years now, right? Uh, so from all of us, a huge congratulations. I cannot tell you the kind of pride we all feel when we when we say that Ayush is our student. Never ever in my never ever in my uh uh craziest of dreams had I thought of that a student of ours can get a hundred out of hundred, right? Uh it's it's not something you, that you see every day. Right, so a big, I big also never believed that we can get hundred in ACC until I got. <laughs> <laughs> I thought right. it was impossible. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think one day we just have to figure out how did you even do that? <laughs> how can you write everything correct? Because especially in a tax paper where there are like tons of rules, and you will yeah. recollect. I will always tell you that. Oh, I don't remember all of them. You figure it out, right? So uh, it is. Uh, it is crazy that you've been able to do that. Right. So a big, big congratulations. But I don't want to take one very important thing away from all of this is that uh, you put in the efforts, right? You put in the efforts. You you are always you are always the smartest in the class while everyone bullied you. And I and I always protected you. Don't forget. <laughs> but uh, but it was fun, right? It was fun. It was a show. It was a small batch at Ghatkopar. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, the kind of. Uh, rapport that we all had it made it all the more fun especially our bowling uh and uh lunch out that together all right, those so times. exactly so we we made those learning more enjoyable enjoyable exactly exactly fun with a lot of joy right so the today's session like i said the uh, ayush is uh, really how we can go about uh, preparing ourselves and uh, if there are any tips, any tips that you have uh, that the guys can follow here. I can see a good chunk of a good chunk of the students are here. To be honest, I wanted to do a, a, a YouTube live, but uh, I did not get a ch chance to put it out. But maybe another session, uh, we will do it on a YouTube because there are also a lot of students on YouTube that follow me. Right. So we can do that in the next time. But for today's session, this is largely our uh, FPA students. And some I can see from outside. Right. So uh, over to you, um, Ayush. I think the first thing that I want uh, you to uh, maybe touch upon is by from when did you started to go all yeah, about uh, all yeah. out? Like, you know, I want to put yeah. all the efforts in. When did that start? When did that happen? Did it happen from the day one? So we started uh, our sessions, what, in September? Right. Yeah. So did it happen yeah. from September yeah. or did you take time? So yeah, tax was just my second ACCA paper. I had given FR pre, uh, before that. 
so like fr got over on it's 7 and we started our classes from 9 Mind so like i always yeah. like to be ACCA. consistent with my studies and ACCA. start in advance so ACCA. probably 10 15 days after okay. my fr exam okay. ended okay. Uh, i started studying so like uh, the pattern i used to follow was like whatever you used to teach us on weekends I uh, made sure that I was able to cover all that in the weekdays because uh, like we just did that on weekends. So it was fresh in our minds. We could cope up and grasp it better. And uh, if I had some doubts, I could ask you the second week, uh, the next week. And like instead of uh, waiting for the chapter, which was over one month back and after that you start and ask that lay so like the flow also gets disturbed and then you have to hurry yourself to finish the portion and you can't uh, you know pick up on everything you just have to you know go through it for tougher so i used to start in advance i like to like be prepared uh, and be confident about the paper i'm giving in awesome so, awesome yeah. that's a very good start ayush thank you so much so for everyone now look this is this is a, a session which is not going to just help you for the upcoming exam, but also for the exams to come, right? Like you heard from Ayush, while tax was his only second paper, right? And uh, for people who do not know, uh, Ayush also missed a rank by a few marks uh, in FR, right? So uh, we were we were disheartened a little, and we kept saying that next time badla lenge. Lekin mujhe nahi laga tha badla Ayush aisa lega. I also didn't expect you uh, like about 19 tax. I don't know how 100. No, so great. So for everyone, please make sure that if you are sitting the lectures, do not wait for you know, the whole. Okay. All right. So please do not wait for, you know, the syllabus to get completed to start preparing for the uh, exams. You have to start preparation right from day one. As soon as you're done with your lecture, the same week you solve the TYUs or anything that we've discussed in the class, do the homeworks, and then also slowly and gradually move towards the exam kit. And that is my next question to you, Ayush. When did you start doing the exam kit? So for the exam kit, I like to start it once 20 to 25 percent of the portion is over, like uh, five, six chapters are over. I start with the exam kit, at least the section A and B for the exam kit, because for section C, we have to wait for a few chapters which are relating to those uh, section C questions to finish. So section A and B, I used to start uh, like one, five, six chapters are done. And section C, as soon as the chapters related to those questions are done, I used to start those chapters also. So uh, in the start, you just have the, to do the study tag text or the chapters which are done. So you don't have to give that much time. And as soon as you start doing the uh, exam case, section A, B, you have to increase the, I have to increase the study time and with section C coming in. So gradually the study time used to increase. So I didn't used to feel much pressure because from, uh, consistently I used to give in few hours uh, studying every day. So uh, when I had to give in the uh, more, uh, more time, so I was able to just extend by one to one, two hours as and when the, uh, uh, time came near for exams. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So what you're saying is that the exam kit does not have to be started from day one itself. Like I always suggest, like Dhaval sir also suggests that, you know, take a, take, you know, maybe take a few weeks time. Once you're done with the first four, five chapters, then you start uh, doing the exam kit is because then you're more comfortable with the syllabus. You start to understand the question that you're looking at is from the syllabus that you've done already or is from the ones which you've not done already because exam kit also sometimes can be funny. It can throw a question from here and there uh, now and again, right? So great. So you are saying that exam kit, we can start maybe uh, in, a, in, in, yeah. in let's say in you know, a few weeks time in a five six, five, six chapters done, you can start it. All right, great. Now, very important because I think this is where uh, most of the students will need help. How do you balance both in terms of textbook and exam kit, do you do you do the textbook and exam kit at the same time, or do you let exam kit follow your textbook? What is your approach? So, uh, as for me, uh, like when I used to do the chapters from the exam kit, like exam kit is like the Bible just to understand the concept, the portion, and you know, the knowledge is from the uh, study text is what I get. And uh, once like the five, six chapters are done, initial chapters, I used to do the 
exam kit for those chapters and, and as and when i used to uh, you know complete an exam kit like one week i uh, two three chapters from the exam kit are done i used to uh, finish the uh, study text and then the, i used to finish the exam kit of those two three chapters so i then used to wait for five six chapters to be done and do exam kit again for five six chapters so like you have done the uh, study text for the chapters you have the concept fresh in your mind so uh, when you do the exam kit uh, you get to know what type of exam questions will come from those chapters because in study text the tyus are there are only uh, to make you understand the concept it's uh, like the exam they won't ask such questions so uh, in the exam kit will help you prepare the exam type question so if you are done with the uh, chapters do the exam kit so you the chap you get more confident in the chapter and have a better understanding because sometimes <laughs> i used to do the study wow. text or some parts of the chapter i didn't used to understand well but after doing the exam kit i used to know oh, this was uh, like what this meant i uh, you, uh, used to know after solving so it super. helped much super that is very very helpful thank you so much ayush so we are we are what we are saying is that uh, you should maybe hold on to your exam kit a little bit until you've not understood the con Concepts because if you don't understand the concepts, then you anyways will not be able to do the exam paper, right? So maybe once you're done with the full chapter, once you're done with the whole TYUs, then you go to the exam kit. If you don't understand anything in the exam kit, come back to the textbook, understand the concepts. Because I feel a lot of students, what they do is that let's say you you did something in the exam kit and you found that it is it is not correct, right? So you try and try and you know forget about okay, I did not get this correct. It's fine. Rather than just doing that, come back to textbook, try and understand why did you get it wrong? Because like we all know on this uh, on this forum, because we are all doing ACCA, we understand that without knowing the concepts, you will never ever be able to crack your exams, right? So therefore, it is imperative. It is imperative that you are just one second. Huh? All right, that was my little one. Sorry about that. Right. So without knowing the concepts, you will never ever be able to get all the marks that are available. Right. And like you've already proven, Ayush, if you did not know the concepts, you did not know the rules the way they are in the textbook, it is almost impossible to, you know, get the kind of marks you've gotten. Right. So a lot of students, what they do is that only fully rely, oh, I will do the exam kit and I will pass. Or I will only do CBE mocks and I will pass. But that is also not a right approach. You have to complete your textbook and then you move to the exam kit. Is that is that my understanding correct, Ayush? Yeah, true, sir. So study text to finish the chapter, the TYUs, and then you move to the exam kit. Because sometimes I used to feel I understood a topic or a concept. But after doing it, the, doing it in the exam kit, I used to stand corrected. Because I understood it uh, differently. So it's important to the do, do the exam kit. So the practical questions will help you to understand the theory and vice versa. Okay, great, great. And just a, a quick clarification once again. So we are saying that should we do section A, B, C all together? Or should we just do section A and B and then wait for section C as per you? So uh, if a chapter is there and it has uh, just objective type questions and not section C, so I used to do both section A and B questions from, for a particular chapter when I used to take up the exam kit for that chapter. And if the uh, chapter which I've done is related to section C, I used to like A, B would be a bit ahead in section C. Uh, I used to start a little late because section C you need to finish a particular number of chapters to be over. So once I finish those chapters relating to those section C questions, I used to start section C. So I didn't used to wait. I like to finish the portion at least 15 days before the exam. And the exam wow. get at least 10 days before the exam. Wow, thank you. Because I was going to come to that question just after this one. Is that according to you, what is the ideal time by when you should be done with your textbook? by when you should be done with your exam kit and the CBE mocks. What are, what were your timelines? 
So for the past two exams, I followed this to finish the study text, the chapters, all the chapters in the study text, uh, 15 days before the exam and give more five days. So the 10 days before the exam to finish all the exam kit, like uh, exam kit, I did Kaplan exam kit, section A, B, C from Kaplan exam kit. And from the BBP exam kit, I used to do section A and B. Uh, not section C. So that also I used to finish 10 days before the exam. So last 10 days, my focus would only be solving the mocks, uh, CBE past 10 practice papers. And in the last few days before the exam, entire revision of uh, what I feel is necessary to for the exam. Wow. Wow. So 15 days before the exams, done with textbook, 10 days before the exam, done with the kit. Now there are couple of questions that uh, that is coming from here one is uh, you and most of the students who are here they know that at fpa we have a habit of using everything that is available to get you guys to practice including the bpp right so we will use the uh, use the mcqs or the se section a or b question to make sure that you guys prepare and we do it very uniquely in a format of quiz right what is what is your take? Because a lot of people don't want to use Kaplan and they only want to use BPP or they want to use Kaplan and not want to use BPP. What is your what is your thought? Are you you think both are important or it's fine? We can do either one and it's okay. So it's like it's better to do both because the more questions you practice, the more you will be uh, able to uh, tackle the different variety of questions that will be asked because the more practice you give, uh, the more knowledge you'll have about the concepts and topics and more revision will happen of the topic. Otherwise, like uh, if you just like doing one kit is also okay, but like I, for me, I used to do uh, Kaplan and BPP both because uh, I used to feel like BPP, there were the level of questions were a little higher than the Kaplan kit. So BPP helped, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, get if uh, out of the box question is asked so uh, type certain type of questions like that are asked in BPP. And section C, I just used to do from Kaplan because section C questions are the past papers uh, of ACCA. So they are almost similar in Kaplan and BPP. So no use of doing it from BPP and Kaplan as well. So from one kit, you can do C, but A and B is the objective type question. Then objective type question, the more variety of questions you practice, the more it is better. So yeah, awesome. and study hub also I used to sometimes refer for objective type questions. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. And I'm glad you are leading, leading me everywhere, whenever, wherever, whatever questions I want to get to because that was my second question is, so when you talk about BPP and you talk about Kaplan, this has been around for the longest of times, right? And at FPA, we use them extensively. Uh, but then you also mentioned Study Hub because that is something that we've also now constantly been talking about. In fact, Dhawal, uh, sir, is also using a lot of Study Hub uh, content in the PTs, etc. that we are doing, right? And something that we talk about in the class uh, a lot of times, right? What is your take? How did study help uh, study hub help you in uh, getting your uh, preparation up to up to mark? And any 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 confirmation of the rumors that what you see in study hub also comes in the exam? Let's see what's your view. So yeah, I uh, like in the FR exam, I saw one and one or two questions which were there from the study hub were exactly asked in the exam and one of my friends also told that she got similar questions from study hub in a pm exam in fact i didn't witness much of that because i felt like frk time the study hub was just long so they wanted to probably promote study hub and that's why they were asking those questions but study hub the questions in study hub are sometimes um, more and way different than the kaplan and bpp questions so they give you more uh, variety and range of questions to practice from so study hub is also a good tool to practice and it's an ACCA, uh, ACCA material. So it's never wrong to do anything from ACCA, actually what have they have given. So objective type question, the quiz and practice question from the study app, I used to make a point that if not all the chapters, the chapters which I'm not confident in or which I feel difficult, at least those chapters ke quiz and practice question I used to cover from study hub. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad you are reiterating something that you know we constantly talk about that use the study hub at least for the mcq the section a and section b questions 
you definitely do them uh, from the study hub because like you very rightly pointed out, it has a lot of similarity, maybe not an exact question, but a lot of similarity, at least in the level of difficulty that you see in the exam. So if you're already used to it, at least you will not feel completely lost in terms of, oh, this is, this is such a difficult question. I only did a textbook and this is now, this is now uh, something very new, right? Because a lot of people want to sit the exam just by looking at a textbook, which is completely wrong and should be that possible doing textbook and giving exams. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a suicide. If you ask me, if you go in the exams, looking at just the textbook. So, so that also brings me to next question, uh, Ayush, and we've spoken about this previously, is that how important it is for uh, students to use uh, the CBE mock when they, uh, CBE platform, sorry, uh, when they are preparing for the exams and what was your, how did you approach it? So for the CBE practice platform, like uh, the blank workspace which is provided which gives us a, a, for, a format for the spreadsheet and word processor for a uh, section c question so when i used to do section c from the capital kit exam kit uh for, for every five question that i used to practice i used to make a point to do at least one question on that blank workspace so uh the uh, format and the way it is going to be asked and i have to type in the exam i'll know and the last 10 days before the exam the cb practice platform has many past papers and practice mock questions 100 marks full mocks so uh doing those uh, full 100 marks mocks like helped me a lot to build confidence because doing that i felt oh these are the ACCF 100 marks mocks like I've did them I've scored well enough in them so probably I can pass in the actual exam also so the uh, pressure and tension used to decrease and my confidence increased because of doing those full 100 marks mocks wow wow this is such a this is such a golden tip I think uh, Ayush that you mentioned and all the 40 odd people that are online I urge you that please make sure that you are using the CBE mocks as effectively, as efficiently as possible. In fact, just before I came in here, I was doing an exam preparation, like you know we do. Uh, mm -hmm. I was doing an exam preparation for the audit paper, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, there were a couple of students who had not used the CBE platform already. And uh, my straight suggestion to anyone who goes into an exam without looking at the CBE platform is as good as you've not prepared for the sitting the exams. You know, how, how will you feel if you enter a house and you know no one in that house, right? You will find anxious. You will find, you will find yourself cornered. You will be very, very worried. What's going to happen? Who's going to come and ask me what question, etc., etc. That is exactly guys what happens when you go on a CBE platform and you find everything new, you have absolutely zero idea what kind of question. And look, if you've done, let's say you've done one of the papers, let's say Ayush has done FR already uh, and tax already. Can he give the audit paper without going on to the CBE and doing the mocks over there? The answer is simple, no. Right? Because it is different. Every question, every uh, paper, has a different set of requirements. In the other papers, you have Word, Excel area. Here in the audit, you only have a uh, Word area. Uh, in the P-level paper, it will be all with different exhibits. So always and always make sure, and we are lucky by the way, the number of mocks on the CBE platform have gone up phenomenally, right? There are almost 10 mocks available for a skill level paper. I don't, mm. I don't, I don't understand why anyone will not want to look at those golden, uh, you know, questions over there, which can help you prepare really well. Like you, Ayush already said, right? So yeah. coming, coming to the next bit then. So you said that we will do the study text. We will do the exam kit, wherein we will do Kaplan, all of it. We will do BPP, uh, at least the section A and B questions, and we will do study hub. And the last is we will do the CBE box as well and the full 100 marks papers on a priority and then you come to the past papers, etc. Is that is that my understanding correct, Ayush? 
Yeah, sir. Because there are six past papers and full 400 marks mocks available. So at least doing one or 200 marks mocks is very important because the mocks will be in the way the exam is going to happen, the format and the flow of the questions. So once you do those uh, 100 marks mocks, you'll know what kind of paper and what flow of questions will be asked. So you just have to worry about the type, the different type and difficulty of the question. You don't have to worry about the paper pattern, the format and everything. You are already accustomed to all that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ayush. I think this is, I hope everyone is finding this super, super helpful. I've got a couple of questions which I will pick up. I've seen Viraj's questions, so I'll pick it up in a second. Uh, but, you know, I had some more questions to you, Ayush. Now, okay. look, this is, this is all the standard bits that we have to do, right? And I think, uh, I'm sure everyone wants to do this everyone at least aims of aims to do all of these things i don't think any student you know start their journey thinking you know what i i am not going to study well i think everyone wants to study right however not everyone is able to manage their time really well so my now next question to you ayush is can you maybe share some some tips around how did you manage your time especially considering now we have only two weeks before the exam. So how will you schedule your day so that students here can maybe try and replicate that best practice? So now there are only like two or three weeks left for the exam. So I think what everyone should focus on is like uh, completing the entire portion from the like study like and even not thoroughly you should at least know all the concepts or the chapters. You should not miss out on anything because they can ask anything from anywhere. And study text also, if now, if you don't have much time left, so at least do focus on one study text, do at least uh, the how many objective type questions you can do. And then the section C, even like if there are uh, 20, 30 questions in a particular topic, you can do the uh, uh, questions from the last five years, uh, the last, because they mentioned from which uh, uh, attempt the question is asked. So at least from the last five years attempt the questions are asked, you can do those questions and uh, like after that just mocks are remaining so mocks at least 100 mark mock and one or two past papers also is necessary and after doing the 100 mark mocks and past papers when you revise three or four days before the exam you'll get to know the areas on which you were lacking or the topics which like you were not confident in and you didn't remember well recollect well so you could and during your final revision before the exam focus on those topics Great, great, lovely. So I think what you're saying is that at least in the last two weeks, what students should be really focusing on is at least get the 100 mark uh, mock papers done, at least one or two of them at a minimum, right? Yeah. And then do at least two, three past papers so that you get a hold of what exactly is the style of question that comes in and then keep revising the weak areas. Right. Yeah. Now tell me something. Tell me something, uh, Ayush. Uh, how did you? How did you? Um. Uh, uh. Let's say if you made a mistake somewhere, right? You found that you did not do this sum correctly, or you found your answer to be different to what the examiner has done. What was your approach? Uh, in figuring out whether you are doing things correctly or not. Yeah, so sometimes while solving the exam kit, I used to get some questions wrong. So when I used to get them wrong, I used to like refer the solution behind and what solution they have given and go back into the study text to go back to the concept with uh, re which was relating to the question and revise it again. And because sometimes there is a line when like while doing it, we just overlook it. But because that line was so important, which was applied in the question and because of which we got a wrong answer. So I like revise the concepts uh, of the questions which I get wrong. And I also mark the questions in the ex uh, exam kit, which uh, like uh, I did wrong. So in, during the last final days of revision, I revised the study text, but also the questions in the exam kit, which went wrong in my first try. So I revised those wrong questions also. So the because those questions went wrong, because I didn't have a proper understanding then that concept in that area. So that will also, you know, strengthen your understanding and confidence. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So I think this is an extremely important point again, guys, is that there will be, there will be times where you will go wrong, right? What do you do is that you don't just ignore it. 
look at the answer. Oh, this is how it's done. And then move ahead. It's important that you fix your understanding around it, right? Because these papers are all concept based. You cannot just think, oh, this is how it is done. Let's assume it and move ahead. You need to make sure that you go back to the textbook like the tax, right? There are thousands of rules that are there. I've been teaching it for almost a decade and I don't remember them. So I only can sometimes, you know, feel, feel bad about the students that you can't do it in the three months time, right? It's, it's not easy. Therefore, if you're preparing, go back to the textbook, look at why you've gone wrong, because there is definitely a rule or two over there, which tells you why you should have done it. Or there is a concept which tells you why you should have done it in a manner, right? So thank you. I think that's uh, super helpful, Ayush. And everyone online here, please make sure that you follow this, right? If you get a wrong answer, don't just look at the answer and move ahead, but also try and figure out why you went wrong. Keep it on hold so that when you're revising, you go back to this question and make sure you have understood your concept well. All right. Now, um, now uh, another thing, another thing, Ayush, is that because, like I said, we are only two weeks away, I am very keen for you to share what was your ideal day like? You know, for example, what time did you start? What time did you take a break? Did you do Instagram, right? Did you have fun in the day? Did you go out? Because I know you're a big Taylor Swift fan and you <laughs> went for these. <laughs> and you, you wanted to go for these right before the exams, right? And I was worried, right? And you guys do did go as well, right? But, yeah, for uh, the movie. right, exactly. So, you know, when, when, People, when people think about a ranker, a world ranker, not just an all India ranker, but a world ranker, uh, can you share what 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 was your day like? How when did what time did you start? What were your breaks? Right, because there are a lot of myths around it, and I want you to clear it. So yeah, no, like I didn't used to study for the whole day. So like uh, just when you when I started studying. Uh, after the lecture started, I used to study only for three or four hours a day because there was not not much to do. And once I like started using the exam case section A, B, and when section C came in, I increased one or two hours. And like I used to take breaks, listen to music, and I like to watch series or drama. So I used to watch them in between. In and like last month or fifteen, like last fifteen or twenty days before the exam, I used to just stop everything. Uh, like all my like uh, activities and all that and just focus on studying but before that I used to just go about normally doing everything like not putting too much pressure like if you put pressure one or two months before the exam there's no use so yeah pressure is needed but just 15 20 days before the exam it's fine so like 15 days before the exam like the time when I uh, I had to do mocks and revision and all that so I used it uh, like after getting up in the morning why are you doing meeting? Five, seven minutes in between, after every hour or so, you can just you know go on social media, scroll through YouTube or Instagram, and after that, go back to studying for an hour because continuously you can't sit. Probably I couldn't sit for an hour, three hours, and after uh, lunch and between dinner again, I used to study for three hours. And probably I am not a night person, so after dinner, probably only two hours. So like. Uh, before 15 days before the exam, eight, nine hours I used to put in for studying and revision and practice. Wow. Right. So I think this is good news for everyone is that uh, if Ayush could do this in eight to nine hours, uh, you know, before the exams and get a hundred out of hundred, I don't see why we cannot, we cannot get a, a at least a 50. Now you all know that <laughs> I shamelessly agree to it, that I need my 50. That all my students know this. Dhawal sir is also laughing because he knows that uh, this is my strategy right from day one. Uh, is I want all my students to pass, right? And touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. We've been able to get some really good uh, pass percentages, right? So, so the idea is that you don't have to go about absolutely crazy with studies. At least right up till, let's say, two or three weeks before the exam. You can start with studying for three hours, four hours, go through whatever content has been done in the class, go over the textbooks, the exam kits, etc. But yes, before the exams, two to three weeks, you have to go all out, right? Because while ACCA gives us a flexibility, it needs to be one paper at a time. But that does not mean that it's very easy that you can crack it by getting up in the morning and sitting your exam. You have to put in the efforts. 
right? You have to make sure that you at least are putting in every day eight hours so that you are able to do all the things that uh, Ayush has uh, already mentioned to us, right? So uh, I think that was one of the most important things and a lot of students wanted to know how many hours uh, someone has to put in. So I think that is also covered. Now, there are a couple of questions that I want to pick up and then maybe we'll continue our chat, right? So the first question that came was from Viraj who asked that, do you make your own notes? So is that necessary? I used to make your own notes. Now I have an answer, but you have to let everyone know. Like I tried for the FR, the first paper, trying my making my own notes for four or five chapters. But what I found was I was just copying things from the textbook to my notebook. So I didn't find it useful. So whenever I wanted to mark something, I used to mark it in the textbook or, uh, you know, write some uh, like understanding a concept or a paragraph in my own words. I used to write in it in my own words because there's space in the textbook. about. Sorry, Ayush, you froze on yeah. all of us. Do you want to repeat the last two lines you said, please? Okay. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I said that the study text was my Bible. I used to just refer to the study text for my concepts and understanding and all the syllabus I used to just cover from the study text. And whatever I wanted to mark or make a point of, I used to write in the, in the study text or, or study text only. And, like, I didn't use post-its also. Some, can, some people can use post-its also in the study text. So you don't have to maintain two different books, like a study text and a notebook. But some people are like uh, uh, more familiar and more comfortable from studying from their own notes. So they can do it like that. But I never made notes in my life for anything. I used to just study from the textbook. Got it. Got it. Great. So there you go, Viraj. You don't have to make your own notes. Uh, study text is more than uh, more than uh, enough. And in fact, I've always mentioned this to the guys in the class is that your Kaplan book is one of the 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 most easiest to follow. They you know the flow of you know starting with an illustration, giving your TYU, then giving you a lot more questions at the end, giving you summary boxes, etc. Those are good enough for you. You can actually just take them, make your own notes if you want to, but the textbook is good enough, right? So thank you for that. Ayush, another question from my lovely Sia. Uh, is it recommended to give more than one paper in an attempt? Sia, you're not going to give. <laughs> but no, come on. Let's see. What is your take, Ayush? Should we, should we do this? Do more than one paper? Yeah, like I have seen my friends giving more than one paper. Like one of my friends is now giving two P-level papers together. So I don't know like why you cannot do that. You can do that, but probably you will need to put in more hours, more effort doing that. But probably I preferably won't do that ever giving two papers together because one paper already stresses me out enough. So I can't take the fresh pressure for two papers. But yeah, if someone can do it and if they're determined to do it, and I've seen people do giving two papers together and they pass in the, both the papers. So if you can do it, if you can put the hours and, you know, the manner, then yeah, definitely you can do and you can pass also in both the papers. Daval sir, what is your take? Should we do, should we do more than one paper? I honestly don't advise. <laughs> I mean, also never do that. because his perspective obviously you can't get a rank that's difficult to get in two papers yeah. right and for anyone who is wondering that uh, if Dhawal sir is qualified to answer this answer yes Dhawal sir has completed ACCA only a few years ago so he was a student so he knows the efforts so I can still say you know what things have changed you can say, sir, you completed your ACCA so many years ago, so you don't know how it is. But Dhawal, sir, knows the drill. Dhawal, sir, knows exactly the kind of effort that goes in. Therefore, even I am a very strong advocate that only do one paper at a time because let's accept it. That's one of the biggest benefits of doing ACCA, right? Is that you give one paper at a time. And like Ayush said, there are people out there who give more than one paper and clear, right? Just a bit of a trivia. And some, some of you know this already, Dawal at least knows, that in my last attempt of ACCA, I gave three P-level papers together and I cleared it, right? So, <laughs> so it's, not that, it's not that it is not doable and nor do I brag about it. But the point is that uh, the number of hours that Ayush is just mentioning goes times three, right? 
So that's what you're looking at. So why you want to make your life so miserable? Take it easy. The whole life is ahead of you. You don't have to really stress over, no, no, I want to get it all done in the next six months or 12 months. Don't do it. You will unnecessarily pressure yourself and you will lose yourself in the journey, right? So thanks for that, uh, Dhawal sir and Ayush. Another question who now Dhruv has asked um, is that uh, how are you able to remember all the tax rules? I I hear that you even remember the page numbers. So mm -hmm. so what's what's that like here? Uh, Ayush, you never told me you got a photographic memory. I like no, I didn't. The page number thing is not true, but yeah, the tax rules, remembering the rules was like very difficult even for me. So for that, like the first time when I did the chapter, did the study text, definitely when I went back, I like I was like, oh, I did I do that? I forgot. Like I had done that. So like uh, practicing and revising as much as possible, the study text, the rules is the main key point, which was for me to be able to be remember everything. Like the first time when I did the chapters, I re remembered those rules. And like before, like by I when I told you that uh, 15 days before the exam, I used to finish the portion. So uh, 15 days, like uh, I used to make a point, like the once I have done a chapter, and two, three weeks have passed uh, uh, after doing that chapter. I used to revise that chapter again. So I won't forget that. Like because a chapter which you have done a month back and when which you revise only a few days before the exam, like you'll forget much of it. So I used to make it a point to revise at least once before I finish my entire portion and a third time a few days before the exam. So uh, like that, I did the tax text, uh, study text at least three times during my whole so that's how I was able to remember much of it. Wow. Three times. Dhruv, you need to finish the first time right now. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, look, that's the kind That's the kind of efforts uh, we all need to put in uh, to remember those rules. Because it is crazy, crazy, crazy number of rules that are there. And, uh, you know, it, it does take time and efforts to remember them. Right. Um. So look, I, I think as far as my primary requirement of asking you all the key tips uh, around how do you go about the exam, I think I'm exhausted uh, uh, as far as the questions are concerned. Uh, Dhawal sir, do you have any questions that I may have missed? Because I am going to ask him one final question, uh, which is, you know, uh, a golden tip wow, around how do we calm our nerves? before the exam do you do anything differently to calm your nerves but before that because that will be your final message but before that double sir if you have any questions no i think Zahir sir you asked everything and uh ayush it's a glad for me as well that we are meeting a world ranker Thank i know you. If, if i start studying acca i can keep myself target 90 but getting 100 is also a challenge for me at this point. <laughs> thank you sir thank you okay ayush uh, uh, one small yeah. question when you got 100 out of 100 how your approach while solving the paper in the final exam? You went sequence wise or you started with a different uh, section, section C, B or A, whatever? No, I How's started it? from section A and B, A, B, C. So when I did the full 100 mark mocks, like uh, eight or 10 days before the exam, so that helped me, you know, plan out my flow in which I will give the actual exam. But in the mock, I used to finish the tax paper 10 or 15 minutes before. But in the actual exam, I probably needed five more minutes because I was double checking all the objective type questions because I knew it was the final time. And probably I won't have time in the last to go back to the flat, flat question. So I checked them twice, section A, B and C. And people say to give 1.8 minutes per mark, but like, uh, I feel that section A and B can be done quicker. So I targeted to finish section A and B within one hour, 15 minutes itself and probably maximum one and a half hour. So the, you know, 50% of the exam time, at least you should reserve for section C because it takes time to type, to understand and all. Okay, great. Because many students still ask the question, what is the right sequence to attempt? We should start with section A. Because you might have seen so many people complain we lost 10 marks, 15 marks because they are not able to make a proper time management. So that is yeah. the most important thing. And I know I cannot ask that question to you. Did you found any MCQs tricky in the exam because you got 100 out of 100? <laughs> it's silly to ask that question. I found yeah. difficult. Like I think you can get 97, 98 from your hard work. Full 100 is pure luck. 
So because there were two, three MCQs which I found difficult or tricky, but I like narrowed them down to at least two, uh, two options from four to two options, and out of those two, I like chose the one which was uh, I was most confident about, and like thankfully they were correct, and that's why I was able to score full. But uh, yeah, because uh, you should not leave any question. If you are like struggling, try once again, but don't put too much time behind it because there may be easier questions or topics which you can solve and you know gain marks. So you should just choose a random answer or an educated guess if you are not able to get the proper answer and move ahead. Sure, great. Thank you so much for your valuable insights. I'll use it in my lectures as well. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Ayush. That's that's very good. And it was a very good question, uh, Dhawal, because uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of students ask this and there are a lot of different permutations. I've heard uh, even the rankers have a different approach. So, look, I think everyone has to figure out where their strength is. If your strength lies in the section A and B, go for it, right? Start with section A. Go to section B and go to section C. But your strength lies in doing section C questions because you've done them all and you're an absolute expert in doing that. Do the section C, right? However, one very important part that uh, you rightly mentioned is that whenever you are doing section A and B, because they are objective style questions and like we've always discussed in the class, is that do not use all the 1.8 minutes available for a mark over there right always and always look for uh you know doing the same in one and a half minute uh or you know a 10 marker question in a 15 minutes instead of 18 minutes because those three minutes you will be able to use it in your section c right in fact just yesterday i was doing tax exam preparation for the existing batch and this is exactly what we said right is that we need to save time for our section c questions because all of you, including yourself, Ayush, I know in your exam reports, your A and B has been done a lot more quicker than your section C, right? So you need extra time in section C. When you guys see Anuj and Ayush getting ranks uh, uh, joke for a joke and everything like you. <laughs> uh, right, so Sambhav is is wondering that, you know, do you, are you really are you really having fun or it is just because he's not able to have any fun? <laughs> No, but I think, uh, you know, it, you have to, you have to balance it out, but um, we have only a few more minutes. So Ayush, final, yeah. final golden tip, especially for all your, all your friends who are here, you know, from FPA and there are some outside FPA, right? What is your, what is your final take? What should one person always do to make sure that they're able to get good marks, if not as a minimum pass? I feel there's like a, Holy Trinity, you should do study text for you know the con understanding the concept and the, the syllabus and the portion and the exam kit and st study hub to get familiar with the exam type question and CBE practice platform mocks for uh, getting yourself tuned with the actual exam. So at least these three things that you do now, I don't think like there's no, I don't see why you can't pass. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much ayush it, it has been an absolute pleasure i don't know do do we have any more questions i whatever questions i had uh, in the chat box we've answered any more questions from the guys out there look at it ayush you are so engaging all the 42 that i joined are there still so good job on that and you are being nervous sir how will i do it i've never it been in a webinar. time i was picking in a webinar like so that's no, you did well. But Look, you did well. I'm thank you. sure. What are your views, guys? Did you enjoy the session? Let's see and, and make sure that you reply to everyone. So in your chat box, make sure that you reply to everyone in a meeting and then put your feedback in. Let's see. What's your views? Very helpful. Great, Ayush. Thank you so much, Ayush. Very helpful insights. Very, very insightful. Super helpful. Look, Malika from from London, she's joined the session to answer, to look at what you've been up to. So good job, Priyam. Thank you. Thank you, Sia. Lovely. Look, look. There you go. Great session. Look at it. Absolutely thrilled. 
right thank you ayush thank you thank you sambhav thank you muskan look you're an inspiration right there you go buddy thank you so much everyone so i hope that like everyone was able to take away at least something from this session and like you are probably add on something which you were not doing and if you are already doing everything so like you know that you are on the right path super thank you good job good job everyone i wish you all the very best and thank you ayush once again for uh, sparing some time with us i'm sure we will thank do one so session much. soon when you get the next rank <laughs> no pressure <laughs> yeah right, sir हाँ जी दवन आयुष ने अपने को एक चांस दिया बाकी स्टूडेंट्स को रैंक लाने के लिए दैट्स व्हाई टुक अ ब्रेक दिस क्वार्टर एग्जैक्टली आयुष ने बोला इस बार बाकी लेके आओ नेक्स्ट टाइम मैं वापस आने वाला हूँ लेके एमिंग पर रैंक मतलब मैंने कभी एमी नहीं किया था वो आ गया अभी बट इफान आल्सो यू गोट अ वेरी गुड मार्क्स सो कंसीडर See you guys in the class soon. Take care. Bye, Ayush. God bless, brother. Take care. Thank you. Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Take care.